Hi everyone, Anjita this side. Welcome back to AB Automation Hub. If you have ever left me a comment saying I want to learn automation from the scratch but I don't know where to start, then this video is specifically for you. I get this question almost every single day, so I thought of creating a detailed video on the test automation roadmap. So what happens? Most people start automation learning completely wrong. They jump straight into the tools, they get overwhelmed and then they give up within weeks. So today I will share the exact roadmap that I wish someone had given me when I started my career. So this isn't just theory. This is based on years of hands-on experience, mentoring dozens of engineers and seeing what actually works in real world projects. So stay tight. By end of the video, you will have a step-by-step -step plan to go from a complete beginner to a confident automation engineer. So let's get started. Step number one, where 90% of people mess up completely. So before you even think about downloading the tool or watching random tutorials on YouTube, you need to answer this critical question. What kind of automation do you actually want to specialize in? Either you want to specialize in web UI automation in which what happens? This is testing the web application through a user interface. This is like clicking the buttons, filling the forms, navigating through the pages and checking images load correctly. So this is just one piece of web UI automation. The other one is, API automation. So this is testing the backend services directly. No user interface involved at all. You are sending your HTTP request to servers, validating JSON responses, checking the status code, and testing authentication. This is much, much faster than any UI test, and this is much more reliable. And honestly, this is much more valuable in today's modern development. Then we have Third one is mobile automation. So this is testing the mobile application, both native and hybrid apps. So different challenges here, various screen sizes, touch gestures, device specific behavior, different OS like iOS or Android differences. So this is completely a different skill set with its own tool and approaches. Then we have the fourth approach, which is basically a hybrid approach. This gives you complete picture. You can test the backend APIs, you can test the web interface, you can understand how all pieces work together. So this is where most of the senior automation engineers operate today. So here, why this decision is absolutely critical. Each type requires different tools and different programming languages and different mindset. Pause this video right now and think about your current job or the job you want to apply for. Are you testing web application? Are you testing mobile application? Or you're testing API? Write it down. And then this decision will guide you everything else. Okay, now that you know what you want to automate, now let's talk about choosing the right tool. And here's where I see people make biggest mistake. They either pick whatever is trending on the social media or they just choose based on one random blog post or a random YouTube video. I'm going to give you my proven framework for choosing the tools. These are the four main factors that actually matters. So factor number one, which is community support. So go to Stack Overflow, search online, search for your potential tool and check how many questions are there, how many recent answers are there, check your GitHub, check how many contributions does the project have and check how many active discussions are going on. Now factor number two, which is license and cost structure. Always prioritize MIT license or similar open source options. Why? Because these tools will not suddenly become expensive or will disappear behind paywalls. So avoid any proprietary tools that require expensive license until your current company is ready to pay for them. Because what happens when you change jobs and new company doesn't want to pay for that expensive tool, your skill become useless. The next factor is learning resources. So search YouTube, search Medium blog, or even go for a paid tutorial on Udemy and search how many courses are available for that particular tool. How many tutorials are there? How many books are there? Trust me, when you are stuck at 2 a.m. trying to debug a test, and if there is only three YouTube videos for that, then you are definitely going to struggle. So choose your tool wisely. Definitely check for the learning resources it has available online. Here is the factor number four. This is crucial. Do not pick any tool which is trending online. I've seen so many people, they choose tools because they just saw someone mention it in a conference or a viral tweet or a viral LinkedIn post. And this is not a strategy. This is just gambling with your career. Now, here's something that might surprise you. And this is where this approach is totally different from other tutorials online. 
So here's what usually happens. For example, people see a flashy playwright demo and then they think, okay, I want to learn playwright right now. So they jump right into playwright tutorials without understanding TypeScript or JS fundamentals, right? So what happens? They will be struggling in the week one. What doesn't my variable work? What is async function? Why the promise is not resolving? And then what will happen in the last week? They will say, okay, I give up. Automation is too hard. But the thing is, they are not struggling with the automation concept. They are struggling with the basic program. So it's just like trying to write a poetry without learning the alphabet. So here's a smarter approach. First option is leverage existing knowledge. That means if you already know a programming language, then stick with it initially. For example, experience in JS, then go for Playwright, Cypress, WebDriver IO. If you have experience with Java, then go for Selenium Playwright. And similarly, for other languages also, choose that tool that actually supports that language. Option number two, which is new language learning. If you're starting fresh, choose based on your target job market. Research the job postings in your area and then learn as per that. So the language you should choose either be one you already know or the one that's popular in your job market. So pause this video, check the job description in your area, what language is the mention mode, that's your answer. Remember, once you understand automation concept in one language, then switching to another tool becomes much, much easier. Now for my favorite part, the actual learning part, and I call this as baby steps approach. So most people make this huge mistake. They try to automate an entire e-commerce website or entire website on day one. For example, forms, payments, user registration, shopping cart, everything. And then what happens? They get overwhelmed and nothing works. And then they think automation is too hard. But here's what actually works. So initially, master the basics of your chosen language. Don't touch any automation tools yet. Learn what is variable, what is loops, functions, basic syntax. And for this, use resources like YouTube, Medium blog. You can even go for a paid course on Udemy. Once you are done with this, then the second step is installation of the tool. Once this is done, then find a practice website. Just automate the login functionality, basically, which is entering username, entering password, and click on the submit button. Nothing else. So this is how your first test should look like. Only six simple steps, opening the browser, navigating to the login page, entering username, entering password, click submit button and verify you are logged in. Now, after automating the login page, what you can do, you can add one more page. For example, registration form. Same approach, keep it simple, just automate the registration flow, that's it. Then go one step further in which you can test what happens with the wrong password, empty fees and invalid emails. So with this approach, what will happen? Each week you are building on the previous week and each success will give you the confidence for your next step. So do not skip ahead. Do not try to automate complex workflows until you have mastered the basics. I've seen too many people fail because they were really impatient. They wanted to automate end-to-end -end flow on their day one. So before we wrap up, let me share the three biggest mistakes that I see beginners mistake so that you can avoid them. So mistake number one, which is tool hopping. You will start with Selenium, then you see a Cypress video, then you switch to Cypress, and then you hear about Playwright and you switch again. So just stop it. Pick one tool and stick with it for at least six months. Because what will happen, you will end up knowing 20% of four tools instead of 100% of one tool, right? Companies are looking for depth and not the breadth at the junior level. The next mistake which I see is automating everything. So you see a complex e-commerce website and then you think I will automate everything. So each feature has done of edge cases you have to consider as an automation engineer. Start small, really very small. For example, one page, one feature or even one test case at a time. Now the mistake number three, which is ignoring the fundamentals. You want to jump straight into advanced topic like panel execution, CICD integration, or reporting frameworks. These are definitely important, but not on day one. If you want to run, you should learn to walk first. All right. Now let's recap your automation roadmap. So first, define what kind of automation you want to do. Then learn the programming language first. Then choose the tools based on community, license, resource, and not just the trends. All right. Choose a tool based on these four factors and then take baby steps. Start with a simple login page, then keep on adding one advanced feature to that automation framework. If you follow this plan consistently, 
you should be comfortable with basic automation in just about two to four weeks. Not one week, not one day, but two to four weeks because real learning definitely takes time. So yeah, that's all for today's video. Now I want to hear from you in the comment below. Tell me what kind of automation you are using and what kind of programming language you are planning to start. And if you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel. Now you have the plan and the next step is yours. You need to decide, you need to start and you need to take the action on it. Thank you for watching AV Automation Hub and I will see you in the next video.